Hello again, it's Randy back in the shop today. Um, our rocker arm showed up, so <clears throat> I'm going to show you today how to uh, check your piston valve clearance and how you um, adjust your push rods so that you get the right pattern on your valve stem tip. Um, <clears throat> I got a couple of adjustable ones that I made here um, <clears throat> but I found a set of push rods that is <clears throat> excuse me just about just about the right length so um, also I had a subscriber ask me if I checked the intake center line and yesterday when I was showing you to green the cam I did not show you how to check the intake center line so I'm going to do that first. So let's head over to the motor and uh, um, I'll show you how you do that. All right, I'm over at the motor here now and I've got a uh, dial indicator set up on the tip of my push rod. And the first thing you want to do is you want to rotate the motor over till you get the max, maximum lift. Maximum lift is right there. So then you set your your dial indicator to zero and you rotate the motor counterclockwise past 50 and go back to your 50. Right there. And you look at your degree wheel <clears throat> to see what your degree wheel is reading. And a degree wheels at 59 degrees. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so then you take that number, put 59 degrees in, and now you go back the other way. You go clockwise to back to zero, which is max lift. And you go back to 50, which is right there. <clears throat> and you take your degree wheel and you look at it and I'm about uh, 151.5 is where the, the pointer is lining up. <clears throat> so then what you do, you take in your calculator here <clears throat> take 59 plus 151.5 add it together which is 110.5 divided by 2 and that equals 105.25 um, that's your lobe separation or your intake center line excuse me <clears throat> the cam is ground on 106 with 4 degrees advanced in it. So it should technically be um, 102. Um, but I went and retarded the cam 2 degrees because I measured it initially at 103. So I decided to back the cam up two degrees and my intake center line come out to 105.25. <clears throat> okay. Now what I gotta do is <clears throat> lift up this indicator here out of the way for a minute here. And I'll get my rock arms here and I'll set my rock arms on it. <clears throat> What I did is I put a little dab of white lithium grease on the tip after I put black Sharpie marker on it. And that will allow you to see 
where your rock arm is riding on the tip. Um, if you put, because um, I got soft springs in it here. <clears throat> Make sure you can see that. These are soft springs, they call them. Uh, just checking springs, basically, is what they are. <clears throat> and I want to rotate this, rotate this over till the valves are closed. <clears throat> right there. Put my locks on. <clears throat> till they're just snug. Way you do that is you tighten them down till you feel some drag on your push rods and you have no free play. <clears throat> then you uh, turn the motor over. Run each valve through a cycle. The, the exhaust is going down. Now it's coming back up. <clears throat> My intake is going down. Coming back up. I gotta make sure I got this adjusted good. Oh, I got a little bit. I got a little bit. I gotta loosen my lock up here a little bit. Get a hammer right here. I got to snug this down just a little bit more. Okay, I got no free play there at all. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to rotate the motor. Exhaust is going down, coming, it's going to be coming back up. <clears throat> the intake is opening. Coming back up. <clears throat> like that there. <clears throat> now, take this rock arm off. show up good um, hold on a second I'll be back <clears throat> all right I tried this again and you can see the tip of the roller riding in the middle of the valve stem um, the exhaust one is a little bit harder to see but um, I got it pretty good on the intake I wiped this off just a little bit more and that's what you want. <clears throat> There'll be like a, oh, a 16th inch to an eighth inch wide band in a, in a valve tip. And you don't want it too much off the outside or the inside. You want to try to get it as close as possible to the center. And then you know that your push rod length is good. <clears throat> Now what I'm going to do is uh, put them rock arms back on and I'm going to move the dial indicator over to the uh, 
um, move it over here and we'll put dial indicator on the uh, valve spring retainer <clears throat> put the, the dial indicator on the valve spring retainer here and we'll check uh, the piston the valve clearance <clears throat> okay <clears throat> I think I, I think I could do this with one hand I got the dial indicator set at zero um, on the exhaust valve and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this degree wheel here as I'm watching the, the exhaust valve exhaust valve is coming open and it's getting ready to close here now starting to close <clears throat> And you want to take your degree wheel and you set it for 10 degrees before top dead center. Right there. Okay. That's on the exhaust. You do the exhaust 10 degrees before top dead center. And come over here. And you can just take and push on the rock arm <clears throat> set this back at zero now the valve is in overlap just like that and we check it push down on the valve on the valve on a rock arm tip there's a hundred thousands go back and do that again here I gotta use the other hand <clears throat> that was just past a hundred and there's two hundred And about <clears throat> two hundred and ten thousands. There's a hundred, two hundred, yeah, about two ten, two eleven. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to do the same thing on the intake. <clears throat> but the intake, you need to check it with the, the degree wheel at 10 degrees after top dead center. Right like that there. Back up again. Okay. <clears throat> Um, the reason you do 10 degrees before and 10 degrees after is because your valves are actually in your overlap it's when both valves are open at the same time <clears throat> I got to get this degree wheel set up here all right <clears throat> now we're going to push down on the intake valve there's a hundred I ran out of stroke. Uh, <clears throat> All right, zero this out again. Try this again. <clears throat> There's a hundred, two hundred, three 
we got uh, about 245 thousands piston to valve clearance on the intake um, <clears throat> your normal uh, bare minimum um, uh, on the intake is probably a hundred and you you want for sure want a hundred on the exhaust possibly a little bit more because <clears throat> as the piston is coming up in the bore the the piston is actually the intake valve is opening as the piston is coming up in the bore on the exhaust it's not as critical because when the exhaust starts to close the piston is chasing the intake valve closed so you can get away with a little less on the intake than you can on the exhaust but as long as you got a hundred thousands clearance um, you're good I've run them as tight as uh, you know 60 50 or 60 thousands already before on some of the race motor stuff but uh, <clears throat> I want to show you one thing here too <clears throat> what I'm talking about with both the valves being open at the same time <clears throat> I'm gonna rock this back here I'm gonna turn this back <clears throat> I'm at uh, 20 degrees before top dead center and as you can see both the rock arms are moving like that there that's at 10 degrees before top dead center so that's the closest point for the exhaust 10 degrees after top dead center and that's going to be your closest point for the intake a little bit of sense to you and I might have said that wrong when the valves are in overlap um, your your intake valve is in overlap as it's opening so your intake valve is actually chasing the piston down like here's your piston and as the intake valve is opening the piston is going down in the bore on the exhaust valve it's just the opposite as it's <clears throat> The exhaust valve is open as the piston is coming up and as it gets closer and closer and closer to overlap the piston is actually chasing the exhaust valve closed and that's a lot more critical um, hope that makes sense and uh, um, now what I have to do is take that back apart take the the crank rods pistons um, one rod bearing one set of rings, one set of valve locks, and a harmonic balancer and a flywheel back to the machine shop. They have balanced. They have it balanced. So um, uh, as soon as that stuff gets back, why uh, we'll be able to uh, finally start assembling this thing for good. Um, it's a lot of mock-up process and a lot of checking. To make sure everything is is right you've got enough clearance and all that it's easier to check it now than after you've got the motor together and you find out you have a problem that's just the long and short of it it's just the way it is so um hope everybody has a good day and we'll see you on the next one see ya <clears throat>